de nós Alone with you
every fear. We surrender every chain. We surrender every worry, Lord. We lay it at the foot of the cross. And we're going to leave it there. Because it's in your hands. Thank God it is in your hands. Destiny Church, how's everyone doing? My name's Mike, one of the staff pastors here at Destiny Church, and I would like to personally welcome you to our first online Sunday service. If this is your first time viewing one of our services, I would like you to pull out your phone and sign up for our text alerts. Text the word HELLO to 417-238-0279. Again, HELLO to 417-238-0279. Also, if you go to our church website, mydestinychurch.com, there is an up-to-date resource page for the COVID-19 that has great information that will help anyone during this time. As we transition to giving, if you would like to give, you can text with your phone, My Destiny Church to 77977. Or if you want to mail in your gift, go to mydestinychurch.com for the address and any other information that you might need. Thank you so much for joining us online today at DC. We're going to continue to pray for our country and our world as we overcome the COVID-19. Now get ready as we go back to service. Pastor Gene's going to be bringing a strong word today on how to overcome fear. Thanks for joining us. Be blessed. Is fear dominating the world today? We know all across the world, here in America, not only in America, but across the world, fear is dominating through COVID-19 and people uh, having a fearful reaction to that. But today I want to talk to you about the miracle of Jesus calming the storm. Uh, we are in a miracle series here at Destiny, and today I think it's no better day than to talk about this miracle of Jesus calming the storm. I believe today that God does not want us to live in a spirit of fear. And we talked a few weeks ago about how Jesus came to the disciples in the middle of a storm and walked across the sea to them. And, and today it's a little bit different, similar, but this time Jesus was actually in the boat with them during their storm. And I, it's really important because I want you to realize that our lives may feel like it's a storm going on right now. But I want to remind you of the fact that Jesus has not left you that Jesus is in your boat. If you're a Christian today, Jesus is in your boat. He is helping us. He is not abandoning us. Let's pick up this story in Luke chapter 8. Luke chapter 8, verses 22 through 25 says, One day Jesus said to his disciples, Let's cross over to the other side of the lake. So they got into the boat and they started out. As they sailed across, Jesus settled down for a nap. But soon 
a fierce storm came down on the lake. The boat was filling with water. They were in real danger. The disciples went and woke him up, shouting, Master, Master, we're going to drown. And when Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and the raging waves. Suddenly, everybody say suddenly. suddenly. There you go. The storm stopped. See, sometimes that's the way it works in our life. That even though it feels like the storm can be out of control, I want to remind you that suddenly, when you have Jesus on your side and Jesus in your boat, that suddenly this storm can stop. It said suddenly the storm stopped and everything else was calm. And then they asked him where, Jesus asked his disciples, hey, where's your faith? The disciples were terrified and both terrified and amazed. They could have said this, who is this man? When he gives a command, even the wind and the waves obey him. It's important to realize this fact that storms are going to rise up in our life. And we can't see things like COVID-19 coming. We didn't see it. We didn't plan for it in our jobs. We didn't plan for it in our schools. We didn't plan for it for our families, in our businesses. They come out of nowhere oftentimes. But when you have Jesus in your boat, you can remain calm because you know that he controls the storm. And that sometimes he chooses to calm us in the storm, and sometimes he chooses to calm the storm. But either way, he's in charge, and either way, we're going to be okay. And so we've got to realize that. We've got to remember that. And I believe that the enemy is trying to allow fear to come in and intimidate us, to dominate us all day long. Fear is trying to come and bring itself into our life. And as Christians, we were never, ever designed to let fear rule us. Matter of fact, the Bible is very clear that we're not to even allow it to come and, and live in our mind or in our heart. Let's look at Romans eight fifteen. Look what it says, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear. See, when you allow fear to come in, it brings a bondage to it. There's a bondage to fear, and it says you didn't receive that. We didn't receive that from God. But you received the spirit of adoption. By whom we cry out, Abba, Father. So as a Christian today, we know this, that we received the spirit of adoption. We did not receive the spirit of fear. And so when the spirit of fear tries to come and live in your mind and live in your heart today, no, 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 that's not from our Father because we didn't receive that from him. Instead, I received the spirit of adoption. As many of you know, we adopted our daughter, Melissa, who was our niece at the time when she was four. She's grown now. But at that time, I remember when she was about 10 years old, that we came to a point where she was realizing that she was adopted and and she was struggling with that. And I sit down with her and I told her, I said, listen, honey, I said, let me tell you something. I said, I didn't have a choice when it came to your brothers. When your brothers were born, I couldn't leave them at the hospital. They made me take them home. But I I chose for you to be my daughter. I chose to bring you home. I chose to be your father. And she smiled real big and gave me a big hug, you know, because there's something about the power of adoption that we were chose. And we got to remember this, that God chose us as his own. God uh, chose us. He had adopted us to bring us into the family of God through the power of the cross of what Jesus did there to all who believe we are now adopted into the kingdom of God. God chose to bring us in. It's a spirit of adoption that we have, not the spirit of fear that is trying to dominate us. And so we got to remind ourselves of this fact. Fear is not a characteristic of God, but fear brings bondage. Now look what 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God has not given us the spirit of fear. God didn't give us that spirit. So if God didn't give it to me, then I can't let it camp out in my mind and in my heart. I've got to make sure that I'm not letting this thing come into my life, come into my home, come into my family, and intimidate us and get us living with anxiety. Listen, fear will bring a bondage to you. It's up to us to guard ourselves from this. God does not give the spirit of fear. God gives power Love, peace, a sound mind. You see, fear will drive you to the store and hoard all the bunch of toilet paper. Fear will have you go and buying all the milk. 
Fear will have you go and buying all the Germex and you hoarding it. Listen, I'm just people buying milk who are lactose intolerant. Right, what, what are you doing buying all this milk? This fear causes you to do that. We have people buying Germex. They ain't never used Germex ever in their life. And all of a sudden, they're, they're filling the car up with Germex. Why? Because of fear. Fear says, I got to have this. Fear says, we're going to run out of this. Fear says, that I got to go grab all this stuff and stockpile. Listen, God has not given us a spirit of fear. He has given us a spirit of wisdom, but it has not given us a spirit of fear. See, when you tolerate fear, you contaminate faith. When you tolerate fear, when you let fear live at the gate of your house, you're contaminating your faith. And so when I have fear coming, I've got to move it out of the side. It's coming in, but it's not staying here. It may come here, but it's not going to camp out here because it contaminates my faith that God, you have brought me in through the spirit of adoption. And so therefore I can rest assured knowing that God, you are in control. Listen, we got people piling up bread, I'm like, you had not have carbs in two years. But yeah, you get lucky you go out and buy six loaves of bread. Why? Because fear causes you to do things you wouldn't normally do. Fear causes you not to be rational and to think straight. Fear will leave you in bondage. We didn't go to church online only this week because of fear. We did it because of wisdom. See, look at this statement. I can operate with wisdom without being controlled by fear. See, there's some wisdom. We can use wisdom. Wisdom says, all right, we shouldn't get several hundred people together in the same building. That's wisdom. But it's not out of fear. We're just being wise and following what they are asking us to do and not spreading uh, the germs. And so, therefore, we're lowering the risk. That's wisdom. I I wash my hands not out of fear. I wash my hands and I'm singing happy birthday, right? Soap and water and hot water, sing happy birthday a few times. Uh, Why? Because not out of fear, I do it out of wisdom. It's wisdom. It's it's wisdom. I I don't go to the store and, and, you know, grab wet wipes and, you know, and and wipe down what I'm going to touch. And I try to make sure I don't come in contact and touch anybody else. Why? That's just wisdom. That's just wisdom during this time. But it's not driven out of fear. See, we can't let fear drive us. Wisdom is okay, but don't let fear dominate your life. Any kind of fear will put you in bondage. See, fear will torment you. That's what the Bible says. Look what 1 John 4, 18. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. First of all, where does perfect love come from? From the Father. There's only one who is perfect, his son. And so there's only one perfect love. Our love is flawed, but his love is not. So when we receive the love of the Father, the Bible says it drives out all fear. But fear, the spirit of fear, it involves torment. Fear will torment you. When you allow fear to come into your mind, into your life, fear will say this, that, man, we're never going to get through this. Fear will say, my my kids are going to get sick. Fear is going to say, my my family's going to survive this. Fear says, my my business won't survive this. Fear says, I'm going to get laid off and not get rehired. Fear says, I'm going to lose my home. Fear says, there's not going to be enough food. But today, we don't have to be in bondage to that torment because as a child of the king, we realize this, that God is not going to leave us, God is not going to forsake us, and God will take care of his children. We can live in that promise today. We can live in that spirit, a promise that God has given to us. We must recognize that there's a battle in our minds for fear and trust in the Lord. That Satan is trying to control our minds with fear. And when we allow fear to come in inside of our home, inside of our mind, inside of our life, fear comes in and it torments us, it puts us in bondage, and it allows Satan to control us with the spirit of fear. But we must 
learn to walk in our God-given authority. And I am the gatekeeper of my house. I am the gatekeeper of my mind. I am the gatekeeper of my life. I am the gatekeeper of my family. And fear, you are not welcome here. Fear, you cannot reside here. Fear, you cannot live here. I am the gatekeeper and you're not getting past me. Why? Because you're trying to come in and intimidate, hurt, discourage, put in bondage my family, and it's not going to happen. We have to use our God-given authority to step up, be the man of God, be the woman of God, be the person that God is calling us to be, and use our God-given authority to say, fear, you don't live here. And so today, we got to do that. So today, say that out loud. Say, fear, fear. you don't live here. We must learn to use this authority that's been given to us by the word of the Lord. We realize this, that I I text this question, this medical question, I text to a a couple of our medical doctors who attend our church, and I asked them this question. I said, is it true that fear, anxiety, and stress lower our immune system? And the all text back and said, yes, that is very correct. We can medically back this up. There's been several things in the medical journals written about this, that when we allow fear to dominate us or stress or anxiety, that it begins to lower our immune system. So when I'm fearful of catching COVID-19, I'm actually lowering my immune system and making myself more vulnerable to catching it. Are you seeing this? There's a reason why God doesn't want us living in fear. It makes us more vulnerable. And so he doesn't want us to live with low immune systems. He wants us to be confident that our father is in control, that he's going to take care of us, and that if anything comes against us, it shall not prosper. That's why the word of the Lord says that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And when I walk in that knowledge and I walk in that promise and I walk in that faith, it doesn't allow fear to come in and to affect my mind and even my physical body. Look what Isaiah says in 54, 14, in righteousness, you shall be established. You shall be far from oppression for you shall not fear, and from terror, for it shall not come near to you. So realizing this, if you are a child of God, you have been made righteous. So in righteousness, we're established. So reading this verse, I am established in righteousness. I am far from oppression, and I shall not fear. These things will not come to me. So therefore, I have the authority to tell fear, fear, you cannot live in my home. Fear, you cannot live in my mind. Fear, you cannot dominate my life. I've been given because I have been established in righteousness. The word of God already proclaims it. My father has already declared it, that fear cannot live in my life. It cannot come near me. So when fear begins to creep near you, you say, not today, devil. (laughs) <laughs> not today, devil. It's not going to happen. No, I'm going to shun that and put that spirit of fear off. See, look at this. God uses faith to produce blessings in our life. Satan uses fear to produce negative things in our life. And so when I allow fear to reside, I'm planting seeds that the enemy can use against me, against my family. And that's what he wants to happen. So he he wants us to be dominated by fear. We live in the world, but we're not to be like the world. The world may be dominated with fear, but just because I live in the world of fear doesn't mean I have to allow fear to dominate me. We can't fill our mind with doom and gloom all day long. Listen, church, we've we got to realize this. It's not healthy for us to sit around and watch the news all day long. It's okay to use wisdom to hear updates and to hear what the president is saying, to hear what they're telling us about COVID-19 and things we can do. But at some point, you've got to turn that off 
and say, I'm not going to allow that spirit of fear to intimidate me. I'm not going to feel that because all day long on social media, on the news, it's constantly coming about how bad it is, how bad it is, how bad it is. And we got to remember how big our God is. We got to remember how big God is. And when I'm always focused in on the bad and the negative, that's what grows in my life. But if I begin to focus in on God, that faith is growing in my life and that fear has no place in my life. The more I concentrate on God, the bigger God gets in my life. The more he can dominate my life, the more I can rest in his spirit of adoption. Look at this in Job 3.25. What I always feared has happened to me. What I dreaded has come true. And so do you realize that when you allow fear to dominate your mind, when you allow fear to rest there, you're actually inviting that thing to come in and to happen to you. So I I become more vulnerable, as I talked about earlier. When I allow fear to come enter into my life, I'm actually allowing that thing to have a foothold in my life. I'm actually inviting that thing to come in when I allow fear to dominate me. That's why I've got to come and say, no, you can't get past this point in my life. No, you can't get past this point in my mind. No, you can't get past this point in my family because I'm not going to allow this thing to happen to my family and I'm going to allow fear to invite that thing in. What you fear, you invite in. So it's important. It's up to us to learn to shut the gate. Shut the gate to fear. You gotta, you gotta protect your own mind. You gotta protect your children. Your children are following our cues. My, my kids, they, they're just like your kids. They're watching the news and they're asking me, Dad, how bad do you think it's gonna get? And, you know, I just, I always try to stay confident. You know what? It, it's gonna have some things that are gonna happen. We may have to cancel some big events. We may cancel school. We may have to cancel coming together at church, but it's gonna be okay. It's gonna pass soon. God's gonna turn this thing out. And I'm like, okay, okay, you know, but and they want to say, but, but I read this. I have one, I have one, one of my kids, they're always reading, but I read this. Then in 1920, you know, they start quoting stuff they heard on the news. I'm like, you ain't read a book all your life. Now all of a sudden, you want to tell me what happened in 1920. <laughs> but they're hearing this over and over from, from the news and the TV and they're reading things on the internet. And I have to be the one who's the gatekeeper of my home. And I'm like, listen, if you see me getting scared, then you can be scared, okay? If you see me walking around fearful, then you can be fearful. But until that happens, be okay, okay? Be smart. We got to be smart. We got to use wisdom. We have to use social isolation and we got to wash our hands. We got to make sure we're doing everything we can. That's wisdom. But we're not going to be living in fear because this too shall pass. And God will come out the victor in this thing if we put our trust in him. And so we got to protect our children, our families, and our own personal mind. I'm reminded of the story of the old Cherokee chief who sat down with his grandson, and he was telling his grandson, inside of me says there lives two dogs. One is mean and evil, and the other is really good. And every day, they fight each other. And the grandson asked his grandfather, said, Grandfather, which one wins? And he said, whichever one I feed the most. And so if you're always feeding fear, fear is going to win. But if you, when you feed your spirit and say, no, I'm not going to feed fear. It, it may be coming. It may be trying to seep in, but I'm not going to feed it. Instead, I'm going to feed that I am a child of God. That God, you are in control. That no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I am adopted in the spirit of adoption. And God has not given me the spirit of fear. But otherwise, I can say this, that I can reject that spirit of fear. I feed that, I feed that, and that will grow, and that will keep fear from dominating and making its way into my life. It's such an important part of our life. Don't let fear rob you of your peace. You know, I can tell you this, that in my life, there's been plenty of times I've been broke, and there's been plenty of times I had more than enough. I've been on both scales and somewhere in between many times in my life. And I just have grown in wisdom to know that it really doesn't make a difference. 
I'm going to be okay. We're going to be okay. And see, I can't sit around and worry about, you know, with the stock market crashes this month, what's going to happen in 10 years to my retirement or what's going to happen here. You know, no, it's going to be okay. Either way, God will take care of me. The word of God says that he will not leave us or forsake us, that he shall supply all of our needs. As long as I continue to serve God, continue to give to the Lord, continue to trust to the Lord, God is going to take care of what I have need of. I don't have to live in fear. Look at this statement. It's, it's, it's a true statement, I believe. Fear is a natural reaction. It's natural, right? Uh, there's nothing wrong with having fear. Fear is a natural reaction, but I'm going to supernaturally get rid of it. See, fear may be a natural reaction, but I'm going to supernaturally get rid of it. How do you get rid of it supernaturally? I simply walk in the authority of a supernatural God who can cast aside all fear, who can bring to an end to a COVID-19, who can suddenly calm the storm, who can suddenly speak to the winds and say, be still, and they are still. I'm telling you, we serve a supernatural God, and he can calm any storm that we're walking through today. So be encouraged today. Don't let that fear dominate your life. Uh, today, I love what Proverbs 18, 21 says. It says that the tongue has the power of life and death. So you're either going to speak into death. We're never going to get better. I'm going to lose this. We're going to go broke. We're going to do this. and We're going to get sick. We'll never go back to school. Or you can say, no, I'm going to speak life. God, you are in control. God, I thank you that you have the power over sickness and disease. I thank you that the stripes were for our healing. God, I thank you that long before COVID ever 19 was birthed and made its way into the first victim, you already had a cure and you already had a plan to bring us out. So my trust is in the Lord. See, I'm speaking either life or I'm speaking to death. You got to speak it out. Speak life over your family. Speak life over your mind. 2 Corinthians 10, 5. It's the last scripture I'm going to read you today. And it says, we pull down every proud obstacle, that's fear, that raised itself against the knowledge of God. And he says, we take every thought captive and make it. See, it's my job to take it captive and to make it obey Christ. Just because I'm a Christian, this doesn't automatically happen. I've got to do this. I've got to put it into practice. I've got to use my authority that God has given me. So it's my job to pull down the spirit of fear. It's my job to come along and rip the spirit of fear and say, no, that's not going to live in my place. It's my job to pull that down, and I'm taking captive. I'm taking captive the spirit of fear and make it obey Christ. Fear, the word of the Lord says that, God has not given me a spirit of fear. So therefore, you cannot reside. I have been established in righteousness. Therefore, you cannot come near me, says the word of God. That's me taking the authority. That's me taking it captive and making it obey the word of the Lord. God wants you to have peace in the middle of your storm. God wants you to have peace when others around you are panicking so that you can be a light to the world who needs it. What greater time to let your light shine in peace than right now today? What greater time to be someone's encouragement? What greater time to be Jesus' hands and feet than today? Let's come against the spirit of fear. Let's let God's authority rule a peace in our life. Sometimes he calms the storm, and sometimes he calms us in the middle of the storm. He has the power to do both, and I must trust that he will do what is best. Today, I wanna invite you, those who are watching at home, wherever you're at, whether you're in your living room or your office, your bedroom, maybe some of you are already still just laying in bed, wherever you're watching this, this sermon from today, I, I invite you to ask you the question, it's the most important question you've ever been asked, and the question is simply this, have you ever 
made Jesus Lord of your life. The Bible says that we must, first of all, believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that he died on the cross for my sins. That once I believe, the Bible says I must then confess it, confess it out loud. We've got to confess that he is Lord. So today I'm going to pray this prayer. And I believe today you didn't watch this broadcast by accident, but God ordained for you to be here. You've been dominated by fear. You've been dominated by fear in your life. You're thinking, what's next? Well, I'm here today to bring you the good news of the gospel, that Jesus loves you, that Jesus longs to draw near to you. So today I'm going to pray this prayer. If you're ready to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, repeat this prayer after me. Say, dear Jesus, I surrender all of my life to you. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Thank you for coming to this world. I believe you are the Son of God, the Messiah. And from this day forward, I will follow you and I surrender all of my life to you. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, we say welcome to the family, God. Now listen, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, it's important that you let us know. Send us a message. You can make a comment or you can send us a private message, but let us know. Let us know you made a decision to follow Jesus today, and we would love to be praying for you. Make sure you get connected to a home church when they open back up, but you're there. Now today, to the rest of us who are watching, if you're here today and you say, Pastor, I've been battling with fear. This COVID-19's been bringing a lot of anxiety to my life. Listen, that's, that's normal. That's normal, okay? I understand that. But I'm here to tell you, we don't have to let that fear dominate us. So today, I'm going to pray this prayer over you. And I want you just to, just to receive this prayer today as I pray. Father, I thank you that you have not given us a spirit of fear. And I come against that spirit of fear in every Christian's life today who's listening. God, I pray that, Father, we will begin to resist that spirit of fear. And we realize today we have been established in righteousness and fear cannot come near me. And we declare no weapon formed against us shall prosper. That we are secure in your spirit of adoption. That our Father is taking care of us, watching over us. And from this day forward, we're not going to allow fear to dominate us. That when it comes knocking at our door, we're going to say, no, you cannot come in. Go somewhere else. And we're going to walk in that authority God has given us. I believe today, Father, when we, we join across the world today, as many are praying, and we say, Father, continue to heal. Lord, we believe the spirit of your living God can come and heal and end this COVID-19. So I pray that, Father, this disease, this, this virus would die off in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God, bring healing to our world. God, bring healing to our nation. God, may people turn their hearts back to you. May you take something the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. And we say together, amen and amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Make sure you keep following us on our, on our website, following us on our Facebook page. We'll have updates throughout the week. We're going to be going live at different times. So make sure you check in. God bless you. Be blessed today. We love you.